And a quick check of the board right now. This is either going to go to 51 or it's going to stay where it is. And Republicans have a shot today to go to 50, uh, which would, in effect, be the same place we were <laughs> four weeks ago today uh, going into the midterms. We'll come in here to the uh, Georgia map here. Uh, and this is where you can watch tonight. Uh, take it back a month ago. This was the difference between Warnock and Walker. 36,000, all right? And the governor's race, at the same day, at the same time, you had Brian Kemp, a winner over Stacey Abrams, by almost 300,000 votes. Walker's got to drive that number up in order if, if, if he wants to win the Senate race against Warnock. Why, where does he do it? A lot of red counties up here in the north. Cherokee County, got to run up that number. To the east, Forsyth County, got to run up that number. Hall County to the east, a little less population, but still got to run up that number. Conversely, for Warnock, a couple counties down here just south of Atlanta and Fulton County, Henry County. We'll be watching that tonight, see whether or not he can get that number or higher. Clayton County, look where he can be very strong in a race like this. But the big one here in all, Walker's going to do real well in these rurals, in these red counties. But this metro area of Atlanta and Fulton County is the big one. You've got 10% of the entire population of the state living in Fulton County. We'll be watching that tonight. Mark Penn's now with us. Former Clinton pollster, chairman of Stagwell Incorporated, Fox News contributor. Mark, hello to you. Here we go again. It is about Georgia. How do you see it today uh, with the polls now open at this hour? Well, this has been an incredible race. Almost, I think, $400 billion has been spent in this race. So I imagine every resident of Georgia knows everything you could imagine. Look, I think the strategy here has been uh, uh, essentially to make Herschel Walker the issue, keep Biden out of it, keep national politics out of it, depict him as unfit. And I think that you've got a Trump-endorsed candidate running behind in mail-in ballots. That means that that the Republicans need a really excellent turnout on Election Day here, and they've pushed themselves into that corner once again in order to take this seat. Yep. I think that's their biggest problem, overcoming mail-in ballots. We have a map here of where President Biden has gone recently, and none of it includes anywhere close to Georgia, but neither has President Trump gone to Georgia. So you have Governor Kemp there really trying very hard to help bring Herschel Walker a win. Uh, but President Obama went down for Warnock, so you, had, you did have some heavy hitters there, but the two possible candidates for 2024 steered clear. Well, I think they're, they're trying to actually not nationalize it, not make it about a Trump versus Biden. We know that even Trump versus Biden came out slightly for, for Biden. So uh, at, at the end of the day, it's going to be a close race, but I do think that the Democrats have had more money they have a better organization on the mail-in ballots. It seems on the Republican side only Ron DeSantis really has had the mail ballot organization that you really need to, to neutralize things. Look, a vote that's a mail-in ballot is a vote, 100 percent. A vote on Election Day is, mm, maybe my kid's sick. Maybe it's a little rainy, right? It's really 0.9 of a vote. So you need so many more votes to rely on that strategy. And it's time the Republicans figure out if they lose, it will be because of the failure to neutralize mail-in ballots. If they win, they will have more emotion and momentum than I would have expected. Mark, look, two years down the road now. Joe Biden said about a month ago he was going to go home with his family at Thanksgiving and think about a second run or not. Well, apparently that decision kind of has been made. Perhaps Ron Klain was asked this question. Watch what he said. It's his intention to run. He's going to talk to his family and make a decision about that. Uh, I hear from a lot of Democrats uh, uh, across the country that they want him to run. And I expect it shortly after the holidays. Um, uh, but I expect the decision will be to do it. There it is at the end. What do you make of that, Mark? Well, it is the chief of staff's job not to make news on this subject. <laughs> so if Ron Klain had answered in any other way, he would have set off like 100 newspapers right there. So so I, 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 I pay no attention to whatever anyone says about whether they're running or not. Most candidates who became president said they weren't running before they ran. That would have been true of Barack Obama and Bill Clinton. Uh, I think the president needs to keep the fiction that he's running as long as possible, even if he's not running. He doesn't want to become a lame duck too early. Uh, I think, you know, he's a little less likely to, at the end of the day, run. I think that the Hunter Biden investigation is going to be a real, uh, a real investigation. 
Uh, and I think that his numbers are so weak that him having to be the candidate, as you said, he's not in Georgia today. Well, if you run a presidential race, he'll have to be in Georgia, and he won't be able to get away with that. And his mm -hmm. numbers are really weak, and most Democrats really don't have him as their number one pick for the nominee. Mm -hmm. So I think he's got to keep this game going, maybe another six months, but I don't believe at the end of the day he's going to be the Democratic thank candidate. We shall see. Low 40s in Georgia, that is. Uh, Mark Penn, thank you. Great to see you this morning. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.